Hey guys, Curious here. You know, I was thinking about something that I heard in some MRA videos. Men's Rights uh, Movement, MRM, MRA. Uh, and that's about women not earning the same right as men when, or expecting the same rights as a man when they didn't go out and like be on the battlefield and like handle that level of suffering and dying to have the same rights well I, I don't accept that because that's a kind of a flawed analogy I mean there seems to be some basic asymmetrical differences between men and women. Of course, that all depends on the individual, but more than not, or individual, race, age, yada, 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 right? But more than not, it's that there is a basic asymmetry between the sexes and that is simply that a woman is burdened with the reproductive cost of perpetuating the species I think that's fair because women have to deal with like genital issues and female problems and that's something they can't deal with in environments that men can because I read it in one article or basically it's just a part from an article that all their biology is right there on the outside you know there's no shield like there is for a man because we have a small urethra and you know we can we basically don't have our stuff, you know, out in the air, out in the open. That's one thing. You know, yeast infections, stuff like that. Other things are like, well, there seems to be a psychological thing about women and forced sexual contact. It's not just violence and stuff on men on men and all that. And even though there is male on male sexual violence it seems to me that there's a some sort of psychological thing about male and female sexual violence and in a combat zone what's a woman doing out there you know well it depends on what era you're talking about you know if you're talking way back in the pillage and plunder days then it's one thing, and if you're talking about now, then it's like, well, it's all really the same thing under the sun, but we're talking about armed conflicts and stuff, and in a mass populated world where, you know, you never have to worry about someone having kids, you know, because there's more kids because of medical science, so there it is there. Everybody knows about genes. You want your progenitors to progenity to go on anyway. So I don't think that analogy really holds true about women not going to war or doing heavy labor or things like the MRA say. Because there is no real fixed point of reference. And that means that there is no there's no point where you can say, ah, this is a fixed point of subjective versus objective contention. There really is no point for that. You can't say, okay, this is an objective reality, aspect of reality, and it is this way, and this such, and such with, so we know for sure, like, mmm, women belong in the home because ultimately that's the best place 
for them. Well, we don't know that for sure. It might make more sense to say, for example, that uh, in society, in some past aspects of society, because of technology and things, that a woman might serve a more advantage to a group to be a homemaker and uh, tender of children while the men go out and do the dangerous uh, crop work and to have a lot of children because people got killed in doing jobs that involved like uh manual labor in farms which was inherently hammerous or um hammerous inherently dangerous but there was also as there is no fixed place under the sun or fixed points of reference I should say that women were dying in child labor so theirs were, theirs were the danger right there is having children. It was very dangerous. It was very dangerous and still is dangerous. Not so much now, but it can be still. So, there we have one idea of no fixed point of reference because whichever way you look at it, inherently, even though things are asymmetrical they are indeed balanced out at the end of the day so to speak everything can be this and that but there is no place for it to be a fixed point of better or worse it's just this or that. Everything has a trade-off. And even though everything is not equal, everything's a trade-off for what you would have it to it. And I think that's a very good point to consider, is that everything is a means to its own ends. In other words, everything has pros and cons for whatever advantage or disadvantage you're looking for or trying to gain. So that way that means that you would have a situation where there was no real effort to gain or lose in a aspect of looking at is this better or is that better like is it really better to be out in the field or is it better to be home in the kitchen well a, a spider from a log bite or a spider from the logs could kill you and so could a miswinged axe. So, going to war or not, it could be all the same. Because it can also be that going to war can be on the losing side. How many women in in 19th and 20th century wars fared fair better because their men lost. Was that an evolutionary advantage to being a woman then? So you have to ask yourself really why didn't they have the same rights as the other person? Just because they didn't participate in the war. Well, maybe the reason was, was because they did participate in the war. But they did it asymmetrically. 
because when there's no fixed point of reference, there's no really anything to say, hey, this is a more or less of an advantage. It's just what it is. That's what I think, anyway. I don't know. That's kind of the way it is, I think. All right. Let me know what you think.